Hey creeps, it's Cameron and welcome back to Library Macabre where we talk about books, movies, writing, and all things spooky. Today we're going back all the way to the 90s, to my childhood, and we're going to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart, something that is very nostalgic for me, and I'm sure something that is nostalgic for a lot of you as well. We are talking about Full Moon Features, one of my very favorite horror movie studios. I say horror, they've also done action films and family films, so we're going to be talking about a little bit of everything, but mostly they've done a lot of very iconic horror films such as Puppet Master, Subspecies, Demonic Toys, Doll Man, and on and on. I recently did a big unboxing of all of these Vinegar Syndrome movies that I bought, and that was such a popular video that I decided let's do it again, but we're going to focus on full moon features this time because I just recently made a big order from them because they had a Valentine's Day sale. So I have a package right here. I mean, let's be real. I have two packages because I go big. Now, full moon features, I have been a fan of them my entire life. You know, going to the video store when I was a kid, I would walk in and go directly to the family video section because I was a kid and I wasn't allowed to rent, you know, the, the horror stuff where you would find the majority of Full Moon's videos. But in the family section, there was always like their Pulse Pounders movies, which was like their, their line for kids. Like for instance, there's Phantom Town, which is kind of crazy that that movie was made for kids, but it was. <laughs> They had their film monster series, which was the Werewolf Reborn and Frankenstein Reborn, which is basically the universal monsters for kids brought to the 90s. I have my original VHS tape of that. Still has the Hollywood video sticker. I actually got this from Hollywood video as a kid. I would eat these videos up. I rented them all the time from Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, the mom and pop store down the street from my house, Jack's Video, and then there was another one called Max's Video. Really weird video stores, but I loved them. But on these family videotapes, there were always trailers for like the Puppet Master movies and like the, the Puppet Master toy line. I wanted all of the toys so bad, and more than that, I really wanted to see the Puppet Master movies, which I was not allowed to watch. But from a very young age, I would creep through the horror section at the video store when my parents weren't looking and try to sneak glimpses of these movies, you know, just the just the artwork itself. So I would see the Puppet Master tapes and subspecies. The cover art for subspecies four actually scared me to death as a kid. I don't know why it's that particular cover really got to me. And then as I got older, I started to watch the movies and just totally fell in love with them, which makes it even weirder for me to say that I don't actually own a lot of full moon movies. The only ones that I own are like film monsters, just the Werewolf Reborn. I still don't have Frankenstein Reborn. I have Demonic Toys and the first three Puppet Master movies. I have Dream Maniac, which is part of their Grindhouse collection. I have Hideous, which also has a Hollywood video sticker, though I didn't actually get this at Hollywood video. Dead and Rotting, I've never seen this. I just recently picked this up. And Mysterious Museum, which is another one of their family films, but that's it, that's all I've got. And I really don't know why, because I collect physical media. I love Full Moon's movies. They, over the last like 10 years, have released a huge part of their catalog on Blu-ray and they've never been that expensive really. So I don't know why I've never bought them, but that is why I took advantage of this sale. So during Valentine's Day, they had this giant sale where it was like 50% off all of their Blu-rays and their DVDs. Most of the Blu-rays were like less than $8.50. The DVDs were less than $5. They also had half off all of their big box VHS replicas, which I bought a couple of those too. And a lot of their like action figures and things. I actually do have one full moon action figure. And actually this isn't really an action figure. It's more of a, a sculpture. This is uh, the Jack in the Box from Demonic Toys. One of my very favorite full moon movies. I actually bought him a few years ago. Uh, this time I just focused on the movies. So yeah, I, I bought a whole bunch of things and we're gonna just unbox them in this video and have a good time talking about movies that I have seen a million times. And there are also a bunch of movies in here that I have never seen. And you're gonna have to help me out and let me know what you think of these movies and uh, which ones I should prioritize. So let's get into both 
of the boxes. Box number one. Look at all of those movies. Starting off, I have one of Full Moon's family films, which believe it or not, I have not actually seen this. I probably should have watched this as a kid because this is the kind of thing I would rent at the video store. This is pre-hysteria, so definitely not one of Full Moon's spooky horror titles. This is a family film about little dinosaurs and it looks extremely cute. This is on Blu-ray, so this has been restored from its original negative, as all of these Blu-rays have. It's one of the great things about Full Moon is that they really do try to go back to that original negative and restore it from that negative to make it look better than ever. Because before now, a lot of these movies have only ever existed in standard definition masters, and those were basically created for VHS, and then when DVD came out, they were just ported over to DVD. So this is the first time these films have been presented in HD and their original aspect ratios. And another great thing about these Blu-rays is that they do include the original Video Zone special features, which were all included on the VHS tapes. So you get these kind of retro making of documentaries that are very short, but really take me back to those good old days of watching Full Moon VHS. Let's move on to another one of their family titles that I have somehow never seen. This is Remote, which is basically a Home Alone knockoff. It's about a kid who is like a little giz whiz and he can create all of these gizmos and remote control operated toys and it gets him in trouble at school. Uh, but then a bunch of crooks break into the house and he has to like defend his turf. Yeah, basically a Home Alone knockoff. This sounds really, really fun. Now we're gonna get into the really classic stuff here. These are some of my favorites. We have Bloodstone subspecies two and Bloodlust subspecies three. I actually don't own subspecies subspecies one the original movie which is a really great film it is available on blu-ray but for some reason they didn't have it in stock during the sale i think it was so that way they could sell their big subspecies complete box set which looked really cool but it was very expensive so i ended up not getting that one of these days i will pick up subspecies one on blu-ray but i think i might actually wait and see if they release that on 4k they just recently started re-releasing some of their films on 4k and they've gotten pretty good reviews so far especially puppet master 3 which they just recently put out so i might actually wait and get subspecies when they put it out on 4k i hope they remaster it in 4k i think it needs a remaster i think puppet master 1 really needs a remaster on 4k but i did go ahead and pick up the sequels to subspecies because i hear these blu-rays are great and i love these movies subspecies 2 is like one of my very favorite full moon movies ever subspecies 1 is good subspecies 2 steps it up a notch and it is just such a great gothic brooding atmospheric film totally recommend it. Subspecies 3 really isn't very far behind. The Creeps. So this is like a, like a universal monster kind of movie where you've got Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, Mummy. But I think they're all played by little people, which is really interesting. For instance, there's this actor right here who was in a lot of films back in the 90s. It's from 1997. It's rated PG-13, so I probably actually could have rented this as a kid and been able to get away with it, but I just didn't know about it until I got a little bit older and still haven't seen it. So we're gonna fill that gap in my full moon knowledge. Here's another one that I've somehow never seen. This is Sorority Babes and the Slime Ball Bolorama. This is directed by David Dakota, who's kind of a notorious director of low budget movies. He actually directed Puppet Master 3, which is arguably one of the better Puppet Master movies in the whole franchise. This one stars Linnea Quigley, who is a scream queen. If you are a fan of horror films, you probably know who Linnea Quigley is. That alone is enough to sell me on this, but you've also have a, a, an 80s film set in a bowling alley with monsters, and it's called Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball Bolorama. So obviously I want to see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of title is that? I don't know, but I'm sold. Shrunken Heads. This is another full moon movie that I do remember seeing on the video store shelves, but never 
ever saw. Like, I think I started watching it on Tubi one day, but it was in standard definition and it was just such a bad quality transfer that I decided to wait and see if they ever released it on Blu-ray. And now here it is. I've talked a lot about the Puppet Master movies and I needed to fill my Puppet Master collection out. And now I have Puppet Master 4, Puppet Master 5. Look at that awesome artwork. I love that they use the original artwork for these Blu-rays. Curse of the Puppet Master which is part six, and Puppet Master The Legacy, which is the eighth movie. The seventh movie, which is called Retro Puppet Master, was actually sold out during the sale, so I wasn't able to buy that. Puppet Master The Legacy actually isn't even a real movie, technically. It's actually a mashup of, like, the best of moments of Puppet Master. So there we go. There's my Puppet Master collection so far. Just need to get Retro Puppet Master and some of the later films. And like I said, they also put out Puppet Master 3 in 4K, so I'm probably going to end up rebuying this in 4K really soon. One of my very favorite Full Moon movies is Demonic Toys. Such a fun killer doll, killer toy movie. If you like Puppet Master, if you like Child's Play, you owe it to yourself to watch Demonic Toys. I'm baby oopsie daisy. I can walk, I can talk, I can even shit my pants. They came back for a sequel with Doll Man versus Demonic Toys. Now I've seen Doll Man. It seems to be a favorite of Full Moon fans. I think Doll Man is okay. It's not my favorite kind of movie, but I am really excited to see Doll Man go head to head with Demonic Toys. I hear this is a really fun sequel. Uh, Tracy Scoggins comes back from the original Demonic Toys and reprises her role. And not only that, but this movie is like 60 minutes long and it's just all action, no fat. <laughs> so it's gonna be a really fun time. I just know it. Netherworld is a brand new release. They actually just put this out on Blu-ray. So this is one that I've always wanted to see. I've talked about this before, how I love when movie posters and book cover art has like hands reaching out at you, either like bursting up from the ground or bursting up from a body of water or coming out of a closet. That's one of my favorite things. And this has that. You have this hand just coming at you and the hand has like little snake heads and stuff. So it makes me wonder what the heck is going on with this movie. I hear it's pretty good. So Netherworld. Lurking Fear. This is an HP Lovecraft adaptation. They've done quite a few HP Lovecraft films. This one I do remember seeing in the video store and always being creeped out by it. I mean, just look at this guy right here. He's very, very creepy looking to me, especially Especially as a kid, I was just like, I don't want to see that. Now I want to see it. Creepazoids is another one that's directed by David Dakota. And this also stars Linnea Quigley. This is more of like a science fiction alien kind of knockoff. I remember Linnea Quigley talking about this a lot in her workout video. If I'm not being killed in my films, I usually have to fight some creepy thing or another. Like giant mutant rats. <laughs> And it just looked really cool to me. So I'm excited to finally, finally watch Creepazoids. Head of the Family is also a pretty notorious movie for Full Moon. I hear a lot of people talk about this and they say that it's kind of really nasty and mean-spirited and gross. I feel like a lot of Full Moon movies are more light. There are some that are a little grittier and darker, like Castle Freak, for instance. That movie is not light by any means. This one I hear is also pretty gnarly. So curious to see what this one's all about. Uh, Hideous, AKA Deformed Freaks. This is one that I actually do own on DVD and I have seen this and it's horrible. Sorry, Charles Band. He actually directed this movie. So Charles Band, if you're watching this, this movie's terrible, but kind of in the best way. <laughs> There's times where it's almost unwatchable, but there are other times where I'm just like, I can't look away. There's one scene where like this topless woman carjacks this one guy and she's wearing a gorilla mask and it comes out of nowhere. And there's like no reason for her to be topless in the winter time, hijacking a car in a gorilla mask. There's no reason but she is. And I'm just like, okay, this is the movie we're watching. Okay. And the last one in this box, and then we're going to get into the next one, is Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death. 
again, it's just like the slime ball Bolorama. With a title like that, you can't really pass it up. At least I can't. And this stars one of my very favorite actresses, who is Adrienne Barbeau. You all know who Adrienne Barbeau is. I love her. I actually got to meet her at Horror Hound one year, and she was amazing. Like, I saw quite a few celebrities that day, but she's the only one who, like, took the time to talk to me. She asked me about the bookmobile that I work on and uh, censorship and book banning. She really got into it and she was so sweet and just the nicest person. I just loved her and I was so impressed with just how she treated me. Goes a long way. So Adrienne Barbeau is awesome. I love her and I know I'm gonna dig this movie. All right, that box is done. Let's get into the next one, which has some very special goodies in it. Before we get into the special things though, I wanna show just the, the Blu-rays and the DVDs. First off, we have Dragon World, which is another one of their family films, another one that I've never seen, but look at this cute dragon. I would have loved this as a kid. It's directed by the same director who did the subspecies movies, so it's probably gonna be good. I also had to pick up a few DVDs. I don't really buy a lot of DVDs because I'm always hopeful that they're gonna be put out on Blu-ray, but these are ones that I'm not too sure they're ever going to put these out on Blu-ray. This is another one of their family films. It's called Zarkor the Invader. It's basically like a Godzilla knockoff. It's a Pulse Pounders movie. Craw the Sea Monster. This is another Pulse Pounders family film. This is another one that's kind of like a Godzilla knockoff. I love kaiju movies, so I'm always gonna buy those. Goobers, AKA Mystery Monsters, as it was known when I was a kid. I don't know why they retitled it. Ubers. It's about a children's television program with these little creatures, and it turns out the creatures are actually real. The monsters look really cool, it's just the movie's very strange. I don't even know how to describe it to you, just how weird it is. But yet I bought the DVD, so <laughs> obviously I kind of liked the movie. Also the DVDs were like $4.50 a piece, so they're very, very cheap. And then we have another film in their Grindhouse line. This is called Zombie-thon, and I just love the artwork, oh my God, it looks so good. Next is Vampire Journals, not Vampire Diaries, Vampire Journals. This is a spinoff of the subspecies movies. I've never seen this. I didn't even know until recently that this is actually a spinoff of subspecies. Island of the Fishmen, <laughs> this just, wow. I saw the cover art and was like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> this is also, known as Screamers. There's a, another version called Screamers, which was also released on Blu-ray, but this is like the, the original uncut version. Meridian, starring Sherilyn Finn from Twin Peaks. I have always been curious about this movie. It's like a scary Beauty and the Beast retelling. Seems interesting to me. I love Sherilyn Finn. I hear it's very atmospheric and a very moody film. And lastly for the Blu-ray, and then we're gonna get into the more special things, AKA big box VHS. We have Robot Wars, which is actually a sequel to Robot Jocks, which I have seen. I actually have the Aero Video Empire box set, which includes that movie. And I really, really liked it, but I hear this one is even better. All right, like I said, we've got some big box VHS. So these are actually replicas of the original big box VHS tapes. Full Moon has quite a few of these in stock and it took me a while to figure out which ones I wanted because I wanted all of them. So first off, we have Headless Eyes. This is a wizard video big box VHS. And yes, this is actually a VHS tape. You're probably thinking it's too big to be a VHS. That's why it's called a big box, hun. It sounded mean. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's me trying to be funny. Instead, it just sounds really mean. I'm gonna actually open this up and show you what it looks like on the inside. If I can find my freaking knife. Where is my knife? What happened to it? I'm worried it's like open somewhere and I'm gonna stab myself in the foot. I had it right here and it's gone. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's blending in with the couch. My bad. This isn't actually an act, I swear. This is real. I do actually plan on watching these for Old School April, so I'm not just gonna buy them and never open them. So here we have Headless Eyes. Look at that beautiful artwork. I love that so much. It opens up here at the top. It's just got this little flap and then you open this up, no artwork or anything on this. It's just this clamshell. And there you go. There's the tape. Very basic, very standard. Now these were actually a little more expensive than everything else. These are normally like 
$40 almost. So even half off, these came to about $17 a piece. That's why I didn't get as many. I also find it kind of funny that VHS tapes for a while were so cheap. You could get them for pennies and now they cost more than the Blu-rays. Kind of weird how things work out like that. Last, we have The Invisible Dead, which of course has a very Hibushi Fulci kind of look to it. Looks like City of the Living Dead. Love that artwork so much. It looks cool. Uh, just having this on display in my apartment is gonna look really, really nice. All right, there you go. That is close to 40 full moon movies. It was a great sale, guys. I. I couldn't help myself. And there are still movies that I didn't get that I would love to get eventually. And then even more films that they have put out over the years that aren't on Blu-ray or 4K yet that I have my fingers crossed they eventually will release. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think down below in the graveyard about these films. Which of these movies that I haven't seen do you think I should prioritize? Which full moon movies are your favorites? Let's talk all things full moon down below in the graveyard. Thank you all so much for watching and I will Catch you on the next episode of Library Macabre. Later, creeps.